And here's a um, list of some of the OOB extensions we've developed so far. So there's dialing um, SMS to a recipient and a message, uh, searching the web, open a, opening a URL. Um, the bot echo service, which I'll talk about on another slide, is a very exciting development. Um, look for a location on the map, find directions, launch an application, uh, send an email message, check the battery level, switch the bot, uh, play some music, and more capabilities. So basically anybody who can write AIML can now write AIML for CallMom and do interesting things with their phone. And uh, CallMom appears as a very simple type of app. It's just got a input text box, an area for displaying the conversation log. Um, it's configured with a, with a uh, software speak button, but also um, the, the center navigation button on an Android is called the D-pad center button. So if you press that, you can activate the uh, CallMom speech recognition. So it kind of works like Siri does, where you press a button to start talking. Um, on our settings menu, you can select one of a collection of bot personalities. So, so far we have Alice and Steve Worthwick's um, Mitsuku and Adina Zoe, the fake Captain Kirk and fake Mr. Spock that you just saw in the other video, um, David New Year's Info Tabby bot, and further down the list there's also even an option to have no personality. Yes, Lance? I was wondering, is fake, are those fake Captain Kirk and fake Spock guy going to act like they did in that video? So sarcastic-like? They do act a bit sarcastically, yeah. So I'll show you more of it, how that works later, OK? Um, and then here's an example of the interaction that we saw before with call 911. If you say call 911, it brings up the dial pad with 911. And you still have to actually press the dial button to make that action complete. So you know, I wouldn't recommend even trying this, though. <laughs> unless it's a real emergency. Um, call mom can call mom. If you say call mom and it doesn't know mom's number, the AIML responds with, uh, I don't know mom's number. You can say mom's mobile number is such and such. The bot remembers it and call mom again will call mom. There are a number of different ways of doing this through conversation, but basically you can, you can ask it to call an unknown contact. It will ask you if you want to add that contact if it doesn't know it already and then call them. Um, it does SMS messaging. Uh, tell Fritz the meeting has started. Launches the SMS app with the, and it actually reads back the text to you, which is different than the way Siri works. Siri does, will just display the text um, that it's about to send. And this is actually good for hands-free operation because you can get a, a, you know, an audio verification that it properly recognized what you said. Um, open a URL, um, you can ask it to show you a picture of anything, and um, it'll use a web service to locate a picture of that thing. Um, okay, so the bot echo service, this is something that um, uh, we're working on in, con in conjunction with Panos, the company that makes the um, Genie app. And the idea here is that there are a lot of different web services out there which can potentially provide responses in a natural language format, but each one of them has their own proprietary XML format for transmitting the answer. And so um, if, you want the, if you want the app to connect to each of those web services, then you have to write some special code to parse the XML from that service. And um, the Bot Echo service is a, is a web service that hides all those details so it does all that parsing for you, and you can just transmit a natural language question to Bot Echo, and it returns the result. So it could be news, um, true knowledge, uh, weather, wiki answers, Wikipedia, Wolfram Alpha, and there's also a translation module. Um, and here's some examples of that. You can say, what is the population of New York City? It finds the answer from true knowledge, and it reads it back to you. It's not just displaying the results as a web search. It's actually having a conversation with you. Um, what's the longest river in the world, the Nile River? Um, translate, where is the nearest restaurant to Mandarin? 
um, the, the speech synthesis will not be able to read the Chinese, <laughs> at least in the default configuration for Android. Um, but at least it can display it. The, uh, you can ask for weather, uh, facts like how much is a gallon of gas. You can tell this one's a few days old here. Um, learning. Um, there are a number of different learning features in Call Mom. You can um, use it to teach it your profile information. So you can teach it your name, your favorite color, your profession, your age, gender, and so on and so on. And it'll remember all those things and potentially be able to use them for things like making recommendations. Um, you can teach it contacts either by explicitly saying someone's contact information or you can just say contacts and it brings up the contact picker on the phone. So you can select one of your contacts and have the bot learn that. Um, this is a really key one here, the speech recognition errors. Um, if, you, if you are familiar with using, um, well, uh, because we're on Android, we're using Google Voice API. The, um, the speech recognition errors are repeatable for the same speaker. So, um, um, for example, if I say, if I say um, Stuart, it always recognizes it as Stuart with a UA. Okay, but I can actually tell the bot when I say Stuart, I mean Stuart with a W. And then every time I, I say the word Stuart, it's going to recognize the corrected version of that. Um, another, another way to use that is just for things like nicknames or abbreviations. Um, so I could say Frank means Francis and call Frank and we'll look up Francis's number. And also we've got the, um, we've got the bad answer feature. This is something that's existed in AIML for a long time. You can simply, if you don't like the bot's answer, just say bad answer and it will um, ask you if you'd like to teach it something else. And all of this uses the um, AIML learn and eval tags. Um, so finally, I'll just touch on wh what our future plans are. Uh, we would love to have an avatar on this um, that would really bring it to life and, and make it a lot more personal and exciting for people to use, I think. Um, as I mentioned, we can use the same body of AIML that we're creating for Calm Mom very easily on other devices once we have apps for those devices as well because, you know, every device can, can make a call, every device can send an SMS message and has a camera and so we can, we can you know, activate those features on different devices using the same OOB syntax that we're using for Calm Mom. Um, there are tons of other devices out there waiting for this technology to, um, to migrate to them. You know, cars, microwave ovens, toasters, just about anything you can think of eventually could have a um, natural language uh, that term we heard last night, CUI, on them, um, conversational user interface. Um, we would like to eventually get to having the client-side AI, in other words, not, re not requiring a server, both for performance, well, actually there are three reasons to do that. One is performance, because the, the system could respond faster. Um, another reason is you'd like, the, you'd like these applications to work even when there's no internet connection. And finally, another important reason related to what Frank was talking about is privacy. Because if you're teaching it all this personal profile information and telling it to send your text messages and so on, then you don't necessarily want all that stored on some server in the cloud somewhere. It'd be nice if it could just be stored locally on your phone. And finally, we're moving into um, combining this with ontology semantic web systems with reasoning capabilities so that we can actually reason about the client's profile information and other types of wor real world things like um, you know, on general ontologies of real world knowledge. So that is it. I don't know if I have time to give a quick demo here. I guess I do, I have two, two minutes. So this is currently configured to use um, the use fake Captain Kirk personality. Oh, I didn't, I didn't configure that one yet, so yeah, that's a good idea, though. Does anyone have any questions? <laughs> okay, Linus. <laughs>
Okay, so I get how it can mix up words. Mm -hmm. And you know how there are multiple meaning words, right? Mm -hmm. What if it mixes up a word like fall and you mean like I fell down and it thinks you're talking about about the season? Well, usually that type of thing is um, from the context. So if somebody's saying they fell down, it's in a sentence where they're talking about they were walking somewhere and they fell down or they were running and they fell down. But if they are talking about the season, it's usually in a sentence where they're talking about the time of year, um, like I'm going to start school next fall. Okay. But even if it uses the word jumble, it would recognize the context? The word jumble? The, you were talking about the jumble in the word. That's, that's the, um, the way that's Siri the works. Problem. Yeah, Siri, Siri works by disregarding the order of the words, as yeah. far as we know. And um, losing all context. Losing all the context, yeah. So um, AIML, as you know, preserves the word order and the pattern matching. Right. Yeah. Anyway, I'll, oh, yes. I, I was wondering about the um, of our services you mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, where you can go and search for the content. Yeah. Do you see that translating a little bit to kind of your box, uh, the web version? Yes. Yes. We'd like to get that working on the, on the server side as well. Right now, it's it's on the client side, inside the app. So let's see. What is the population of Philadelphia? So it's got the. It's recognized the input. Now it's. The first of July, two thousand eight estimated population was one million four hundred forty-seven thousand three hundred ninety-five. Answers .com. What is the weather in Philadelphia? Of course, we could just look out the window. It is currently overcast, 45 Fahrenheit. <laughs> um, how many feet in a mile? Interesting question. Oops. So now it failed to find the answer to that with the Bidaco service, so it's opening up a uh, Google search for that. Okay, thank you very much.